Hello and welcome back to another video where we'll be discussing uh, how to you know, do things in SQL. Today we'll specifically be discussing how to load uh, data from a raw file. Um, it's going to say txt, uh, it really could be txt, csv, um, I'm going to explain this kind of step by step, kind of what each of the, the parameters mean that you can kind of see here uh, below. Uh, I'm going to kind of walk it through and that way you can kind of understand, well, how do I set this up for a CSV? How do I set this up for something else? Uh, what happens, you know, one, one of the things is what happens when there's not just commas that are delimiting it, but maybe there's double quotations that are there to help you deal with uh, commas inside of a field. Um, so there's a lot of issues that you can run into when loading uh, CSV fields. All right, so we're gonna be looking into loading CSV fields with CS SQL Server today. Uh, today we're gonna be using this table called raw med CMS. Uh, this data comes from uh, basically CMS. So if you go to like cms.gov, you can get this fake data set essentially of claims. So medical medical care claims. Um, they they make it, it's great. Uh, so if you ever need to do analysis on medical care data and you just kind of want to prep up and, and have a dummy file, this is great. So here I have, um, you'll see this bulk insert script. Uh, right away, you kind of see bulk insert into the table name. This first portion here, bulk insert into, uh, specifies which table you want to, which we're calling it raw med CMS. Look, uh, for anyone who is an ETL fan, you know that the first table you're going into is a raw table. Uh, you can catch up. We're going to be making some videos about making ETLs to explain through this whole process, but raw just explains that you have not done anything to this data. When you first load data into a table, you should not be changing anything. You should just be loading it as is. Uh, cleanup can happen later. You just want to keep it so you know if something's gone wrong, where it's going wrong. The next statement is this from statement. So from, as you can kind of see, is where the data is coming from. This is, this is the raw file right here. So in this file here, um, where I'm calling small, because I've, I've really shrunk down this file um, only to about 100 uh, columns. Let's see if I've got it right here. I don't actually have it. Let me see. So if we open this one up, so let's open this up. So you see it's, it's really kind of, it's just a bunch of columns with comma separated data. Um, so that, that's really the file. So we're calling it small because the big one, if you see over here is much, much, much bigger, 158,000 kilobytes. All right. Now here's where it gets interesting, right? Field terminator. So in this case, I didn't specify whether it's a CSV, TSV, uh, pipe delimited, or ver a variety of other things. For anyone who's dealt, dealt with positional, you, I'm not gonna go over positional, but that's a whole hairy mess that I hope you don't have to go through, and if you do, I feel bad for you. Um, next is row terminator. So right, field terminators first, so that tells you what, what defines a field. And we're gonna go over that one in another video for, for double quotations, because sometimes commas can exist right inside of a data field, so like, if you've got something, a, a data field that maybe looks like um, something like a, what is what it would be, Seattle, uh, comma, Washington or something, or was there a space or something like that? Well, now, if you do this, and this is one field, this is supposed to be like one specific field, this isn't supposed to be two different fields, how this is set up right now will break that. You will get two different fields. This will think, oh, I want two different fields, but we'll cover that in a different video, but I'm giving you that as a heads up. This will take it as two different fields because that comma, it's gonna assume, oh, this must be a separate thing. Next, we're looking for a row terminator. So a row terminator is where does the row end? And for anyone who knows, a backslash n kind of is one of the various types of row terminators. Uh, if you ever kind of want to know what row terminator is going on, um, I actually wasn't planning to do this, but let me, let me, let me go through this. If you want to kind of figure out what, what kind of row terminator is going on um, in my file, uh, I would edit it with Notepad++ and you can hit view. And now I'm trying to remember where it is, show end of line. And if you go to the end of line, you see the CRLF and actually, so I should be using more than just uh, backslash n, but it's working for me right now. But if it, if it doesn't work for you, you should change it to, um, I think it's backslash r backslash n and I'm forgetting right off the top of my head, but this will let you tell you what kind of data type is at the end of your um, line break. Cause it could be just LF or just CR, it gets really funky. So sometimes this will cause a problem. Like if your ETL is not loading data, this could be an issue. Um, and you'll never see it because it just doesn't show up unless you say, let me look at it. All right, so that's the row terminator. 
Again, I have had many problems with row terminators not matching and had to go back and, and like, why aren't, why aren't these fields uh, matching up? If you load data and notice that the data that does load doesn't seem to be matching up uh, in the fields, like, you know, you've got fields that are kind of in the wrong places, sometimes this can be caused by the row terminator because it keeps kind of going. Or maybe uh, the other big issue I'll see is it'll take the last field and think it needs to keep going into the next row and take the, keep taking all of the data in the next few rows and it'll never find the line break. So you'll uh, eventually overload that field and that field will just say, hey, there's too much data here and I can't even handle it because it's trying to load all of the data into one field. Um, so that's, that's sometimes another thing that kind of can cause an issue. So just an important point to point out. Okay, batch size. This is kind of important. Um, this depends on performance. Batch size tells you how big of a batch, how many rows are you going to deal with in each transaction of the bulk insert. So you'll notice that this is a bulk insert. A key thing about a bulk insert is it, it refers to the fact that it's a big insert. It's not an insert where you're just inserting a single row. See, a single row gives you that advantage of, of one at a time. So when an error happens, it knows exactly what happened in that row. Bulk insert does not give you this advantage. Bulk insert, much faster because you're literally loading a thousand rows all at once. But if an error occurs, it's much harder for it to figure out what went wrong because it's just loading a thousand rows and something went wrong in there and it doesn't really know where, it just knows it didn't load it. So um, depending on how many rows you kind of want to insert at a time, uh, bulk insert will kind of let you give you that, or batch size will give you that option. Um, so I'm set, I've set max errors to one, so it allows one error, or you could set it to like 100, it allows 100 errors. So basically what this is saying, and this is kind of combined with batch size, you know, if you were to have, let's say you put it to zero, let's say you don't want any errors. If you had 100 rows and you get one error, those 100 rows will not be loaded, but the next row, set of rows will try to be loaded basically. So it, it kind of like will fail, fail out, um, and that way you can kind of know where it's failing. Uh, first row tells you basically, is it the first or second row, right? Like if you've got a header, then the first row is the second row. If you have a header, or if you don't have a header, then the first row is the first row, and you don't even necessarily need uh, this parameter here. And then finally, error file. You need to be logging what happens. So you need to have some sort of file that basically says where, which, which rows are causing the error. Um, you can add other features here, like possibly which specific rows um, cause the error or other bits of information, but this is kind of your basics to a bulk insert. All right, so let's run this and you're gonna see something that, oh, there was an error, right? This error and what it was. Um, and essentially what you're going to end up wanting to do is capture this error. Uh, right now we're not capturing errors. We'll talk about that later once we start kind of building out how to bulk insert uh, better. Uh, this is really just a basic bulk insert. Um, so let's look at this error though. So I wanna look at this error. So if you remember, you see that there was an error file, so it went somewhere. And this one actually specifies exactly where it went and it says the second second uh, row um, and the second data field called claim ID. And what you'll see is it's huge. Like I made this huge file on purpose or this huge uh, field, so it would, it would break the load. Um, and that's on purpose. And you'll notice it's tracked. Here it is, it's tracked. You can you know come back later and read it or upload those into an error table if you want to create an error table. Um, I just think it's really important to track your errors. That's something that, you know, uh, you probably see some of my posts that I've written about. Error tracking is very important. It's important to QA. It's important to knowing if your system is healthy. Um, you can count how many you failed, how many didn't. It might be okay if like two fail out of 10 million occasionally. So, you know, keeping track of how many things fail and how many things don't gives you a good understanding of what's okay and what's not okay. Uh, thank you so much for joining today. We're going to kind of keep going through bulk inserting and now we're going to kind of go into improving this and really developing a system to take raw files and manage them really effectively to automate a lot of your work. Um, and we're going to be doing it kind of in Python and SQL and I'm just going to be going over this so you can get a good idea of how to all work it. Thank you so much for joining me. We're going to continue this concept about bulk inserting. I know it's not thrilling. I know it's not analytics, but building good basics, uh, everyone needs it. So I hope you understand this. I hope it was helpful. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything I can do for you, any specific, specific SQL things I can answer or Python or analytics, automation, et cetera. Thank you so much. Bye.